We're going to take a look at a new tool now in 2016 called the Thread Feature. Historically, we've always advised people to use cosmetic threads to show thread detail uh, on shafts and things like that, as it can be quite a resource and intensive process uh, to actually physically create a thread. However, to ensure greater accuracy for digital simulations or to produce a 3D printed prototype, it's often necessary to model the physical threads on shafts and holes. Uh, and many customers have asked us how to do this in the past. In 2016, this now got a lot easier with the introduction of the thread tool. So if we select the thread tool, we can choose a specification from here. So if we choose a, a tap, for example, select a size, so we'd like M10 by 1.5. Just need to choose a start location, which can be an edge, and an up to, well, we're gonna use an up to selection end condition here. You can select that like so. And you'll see it creates a preview of the thread very quickly. Now, that's a lot faster than we could do in previous releases, but there are some other niceties to this tool as well. So firstly, we can actually build in an offset at the start and end. So here we want to overrun that thread and we're going to do the same at the other end. So we're just going to run the thread past where it starts and run it past where it finishes. Towards the bottom, you can specify the type of thread method you're using. So if we're doing a cut or an extrude, for example, we can locate the profile. We can also create left and right handed threads within here as well. So if I click the green tick to just complete that tool, you'll see we get a really good detailed representation of our thread. Now, another nice thing that we can do with uh, this is we don't have to stick with standard pitches. We can alter the pitch. So for example, here, if we want to create a multi-start thread, we can choose a pitch angle or pitch start of three millimeters. And because everything's confined within one tool, we can do things like pattern this, like we can any other feature, much easier. So here, if we just create a multi-start thread, we've got that generated really easily. The other really good thing about confining this to one tool is that if we make some changes to the physical geometry around it, so if we change the shaft length from 28 to 35 here, for example, because we've used an intelligent end condition, all the information updates to reflect the change that we've made. So much, much faster than we've been able to do that before. If we take a look at another example here, we've got a feed screw conveyor. Uh, and if I open up this particular part here, I can create my own custom profiles for the thread forms that I want to create. So if I use the thread tool along the top here, again, just from the specification box, I can choose a particular type. So we've got one created here called feed screw profile. These are actually just normal sketches, uh, library feature sketches, and they can have configurations available within them as well. So here, if we choose a configured value, again, we can choose the start position, uh, an intelligent end position, and you'll see it does a really good job of routing that thread for us. It can also override sizes for the diameter, for example. And again, we can build in offset values for the start and the end. Towards the bottom, I mentioned earlier, we can specify whether it's a cut or an extrude. In this example, it's an extrude. And we can then choose the green tick to complete the feature. So we've seen the introduction of the new thread tool, which includes standard and custom threads. And it enables us to model threads in one simple to use command.